Reserve time. What's up, guys? And welcome back to the Battle Central Europe Season 3. We are in the loser's bracket. We're going to have a best of three between the Vegas Squadron and Lions. Winner goes on, loser goes home. Here on Heffler TV HB1, we're going to be bringing you the best of three. I'm Mike Loris, and I've got Grandis here as well. And man, it's uh, actually the tournament's coming to a close. This is one of the last games left. And I just realized that I did not accept the Skype call. So he had no idea what I just said. But uh, I'm sure I'm just going to throw him into the deep end to let him say something right now. Or not? Sorry about that. I was not expecting us to start early. Yeah, I wasn't either. This is probably the first time in the tournament that we started early. That sounds about right. Or even in Dota history that we start early. I mean, we've started early before, but it happens like once a month, maybe. Well, it's going to be the first time ever, and that means that everyone who's placing their rares, placing their bets, they're going to come in, they're going to see the draft is already done, and they don't give a shit about the draft, so I'm sure they're going to be okay with that. Unless they do care about the draft, in which case, sorry guys, you should have gotten here earlier. Anyway, best of three, Vegas Squadron, Lions, I would say probably Vegas Squadron have a little bit more power in their lineup, but... Lions have been consistently impressing me ever since they formed. Maybe I'm just consistently underestimating them, but, oh man, they're doing pretty well. Well, as far as the um, odds on Dota 2 Lounge, it's 63-37 in the favor of Lions, actually. So maybe the betters have caught on to the fact that Lions are looking really strong right now. As far as this draft is concerned, Vegas Squadron will start things off with an Elder Titan and Lions with a Vengeful Spirit and a Viper. Hmm. Or maybe we just upsold the Lions so much that we're messing with the odds. Because we're like, oh, Lions, they're underrated, guys. They're underrated. Place your bets. Suddenly we uh, place all the bets on Vegas Squadron, and then we kind of like go in for the long-term hustle on all of the betters. But <clears throat> that's probably not what's happening. Because that wouldn't be moral. Uh, Lions, Vengeful Spirit, Viper. That's, uh, first of all, two range heroes. So got to keep your eyes open for the Drow Ranger, which they did run yesterday, I believe. Era pretty much just stomped the ha crap out of album sheet I want to say uh, with a Drow Ranger in game three so that is something that Vegas Squadron definitely have to keep in mind. Vegas Squadron with the Elder Titan opening first it's fine it's going to dissuade Lions from going for heroes like Morphling and stuff like that but I'm not usually sure if Elder Titan is first pick worthy. It depends on the team. I think right now he's kind of a flavor of the month hero and maybe getting a little bit more praise than he should. Fox is going to be the choice for Vega Squadron. I do expect the Drew Ranger to be banned out by Vega. Um, there's no real reason to leave it into the pool. Even if they banned out the Visage, Lions have shown um, that they are still comfortable playing the Drew even without the Visage combination. And it is going to be their first ban. And that's never really what you want to go up against if you're the Vegas Squadron. Puck, as their second pick, is another one of those heroes that uh, isn't going to lend yourself into any direction. With Puck, Elder Titan, you can pretty much do whatever you want with your draft. Um, then it just comes down to a matter of what are Lions scared of. And I think in that sense, well, Necrophos is definitely justifiable. He warps the game. He's just one of those heroes. And it will do pretty decently with an Elder Titan. If you get an Ancient Seal as well from Scarath Mage, you could bring someone down from like a third of their HP Ten or something, or remaining. even more. Yeah, especially if an Agnum Dollar Scepter is involved, it gets really nasty really quick. Um, either way, Vegas Squadron, they'll ban out the um, Lycanthrope, so they really don't want to deal with any of those um, bonus damage based pushing uh, lineups. With the Vengeful Spirit plus Drow Revenge plus Lycanthrope, it is very scary to go up against, and your tower is Ken full. Um, so definitely an understandable ban. It's going to be a Slark for Lions, for Era. Hmm. So we have a Storm Spirit ban to protect that Slark, and I think that's actually a pretty good one. Storm Spirit was doing some pretty serious work yesterday, or in yesterday's games, and uh, Vegas Squadron, I believe I have seen them play the Storm Spirit before. Nothing really huge comes to mind right now, but it has been a long time since I've casted Vega, so who knows. Phantom Assassin, going to be the pickup from the Vegas Squadron side, so they're going to have their share of mobility. Both sides are, really, so... Disables are going to be at a premium. Puck Silence is a nice start. Ventral Spirit Missile is also a nice start, but each side, they're going to have to pick up just a little bit more because if this trend continues, we're going to have a lot of heroes with blinks and mobility skills and you know general ways to move around that needs to be silenced or stunned. For sure. Right now, there's nothing huge left in the pool that's going to lock that down either. Um, the Titander has already been banned. Lines, I'm not exactly sure what direction they want to go with their last core. Centaur looks pretty good, but then again, they are lacking a way to instantly lock somebody down. Scarath Mage, although he's usually 
Um, left through the pool, I think would be a solid pickup for Lions here. Yeah, there's just a fast Sable versus Puck, and of course it would also be very good against them, because Slark is also vulnerable to that fast Ancient Seal, so getting that combination with Ventral Spirit is also a very high damage combination, and Slark and Viper, no slouches in the damage department either, so you're going to be able to kill things pr uh, pretty darn quickly. And when you're talking about a Phantom Assassin, when you're talking about Elder Titan heroes that demand focus, it's not going to be that, it's going to be the Enigma. I guess that is a way to lock down heroes in the black hole, it's far from reliable, but if you land it, then sure, why not? Yeah, if you do land it, it is the big daddy of all stuns, and lions, they probably will be able to get away with it. As of late, Elder Titan's been laned more as a support than as a um, offlaner, and even if they lane as an offlaner, putting pressure onto the enemy team, when you have an Elder Titan on your side in the laning phase is usually pretty limited, unless they get a super aggressive roaming support combination, which is possible for Vega Squadron, it's unlikely. Um, for now, Okram Jai has somehow managed to get his way through to the pool, and Vega Squadron, I think it would be a worthy pickup for them. Bloodlust on Phantom Assassin is incredibly useful, as is just the extra nuking power from Fire Blast and Lockdown that he offers. Yeah, at the very least, it's another point-click stun, and when you're dealing with Enigma Slark, you really need that. Or you could wait until Dying last, that's uh, fine as well. I'm assuming now the Elder Titan is going to be 100% played in that support role, with Phoenix being the pick now from Vega Squadron. Um, it's another hero that really demands answers as far as crowd control effects. You don't really want him to just Icarus dive away, because he is so soft. If you stun him, silence him once, most likely he's going to die. But Lions, they need another core hero. And as far as cores with stuns, the list isn't really that large. So I think this Phoenix is an alright pick. He really only has to worry about the Ventral Spirit missile, and uh, that's going to be pressuring him in lane. Yeah, and that's really important for Phoenix. As far as offlaners are concerned, he doesn't have that fallback mechanism to go back into the jungle, and it really does need to have a decent laning phase at the very least, have an impact later on in the game to get those levels up, and I think this game is a pretty good one for it. When an enemy picks up Enigma, this is a decent way to punish it. You can't really black hole a supernova or else the universe will explode. I don't really know what happens if that would happen in the real world, but I'm pretty sure it won't be good for everybody. Broodmother is going to be the last ban out. The Lions could have used it okay, though. I think Vega Squadron would have had enough answers to deal with that hero. Maybe they're a little bit low on actual stuns to kill off Broodmother, but it's instead going to be a Timbersaw. Hmm. Radiant well, it's hit. just damage everywhere. It synergizes pretty well with the Enigma. I suppose Phoenix and Elder Titan still are strength heroes, but uh, it's just another hero that is going to do a lot of damage, that is going to demand crowd control effects from Vega, and they're going to oblige in the Disruptor. It's not the best crowd controller, but he gets the job done with Static Storm, especially versus Enigma. Yeah, as far as guaranteed lockdown, both teams are pretty limited. I mean, um, for this type of draft, it's very damage heavy, and I think whoever gets the initiation on the other side is going to have an advantage um, once these team fights start putting themselves together, once we hit level sixes um, for most of our heroes. Either way, I'll go ahead and introduce the Radiant side is Vega Squadron, with our Zeke playing the Elder Titan, currently heading off into the offlane with Nine Pashan Kavizavu on the Phoenix. I have Pashi Bashu, right? I assume it's Pashi Bashu, but <laughs> I have no Who idea. Knows? <laughs> Hopefully it is, because that's a lot easier to say. Mid lane, it's going to be no one on the puck and bottom lane. Phantom Assassin played by Stellianer and Disruptor by Seam of the Slayer. And for the Lion side, we got much easier to pronounce names. Hanskin is going to be playing the Enigma with Seal Kid supporting as the Ventral Spirit. Mid lane is going to be Eight Mothers Viper with top lane. Ira is going to be handling the Slark. That leaves Jonas and Fan on the bottom lane Timbersaw solo. I've seen Jonas and Fan play quite a few heroes. I don't recall him playing Timbersaw recently. It's generally the Bat, Centaur kind of heroes that I really remember from him, but uh, hopefully he plays a pretty decent one. His bottom lane situation is actually going to be fairly easy with just two heroes to worry about. Yeah, you need to be careful not to be caught out by a glimpse, but... Even if they do glimpse him back, I think it's unlikely that they actually have the damage to kill him until they have level 6, um, which is going to be a time where Timbersaw is going to be just fine. Phoenix as well as Ventral Spirit having a little scuffle inside the, the woods. Begins. It's going to be pretty even on either side. Seal Kid eats through a decent amount of mana and a decent amount of health burned on the Phoenix as well. Should make my life easier. It's a good thing Phoenix took a ring of protection. If he was making that fight happen without that extra armor, he would be so messed up right now. Uh, I suppose Phoenix does have a little bit more regeneration, but he's going to have to burn through that very, very quickly. And while well, Phoenix wants to live in the lane, then he's going to have to use his health as well, whereas Venture Spirit doesn't exactly have that scenario. For the Enigma, though, it's going to be Arzeek just being a general annoyance. There is now going to be one, two camps blocked 
for the Enigma. It's not the worst thing in the world for him, though. What is kind of bad is that he's going to start the jungle without his actual guy there. Actually, no, never mind. It's not going to be that bad. But our Zeke is very capable of punishing Handskin right now, just because you will be able to get a lot of extra damage from the Spirit, and then you could just lay into the Enigma. Does Sunfan taking quite a bit of damage down towards bottom, but yeah, I really like what this Elder Titan is doing. Just being a general nuisance, soaking the experience away from the Enigma, and if he can get a CS on one of these Eidolons or one of the big creeps, that slows down Enigma so much. And Elder Titan, he's not really costing himself anything for this, and since he gets his Spirit through so many units, that's going to be a lot of damage that he can use to harass or um, just be a nuisance inside this jungle. It's not the first hero that comes to mind when you think of harassing a jungler, but Elder Titan does it pretty well. Especially when you could pretty much two-shot the Eidolons of the Enigma. Lesser Eidolons are actually pretty darn weak, so they die really easily, and they won't actually be able to punish our Zeke anytime soon. Maybe when Enigma gets to level 3, when the, Enig when the Eidolons are one level higher, then if the Elder Titan goes in, he's probably going to take more damage and will be hurt more than he's actually helping the team, but until that happens, Enigma is at the Elder Titan's mercy. Of course, ET isn't really getting that much from this, as far as gold is concerned, but stopping or slowing the Enigma is 100% worth it until this happens, until Viper says, enough is enough, let's just kill this guy. Our Zeke, though, is going to see this one coming, and Viper pulled off the lane for nothing. Yeah, this is going to give a little bit more experience to the Phoenix as well. He's more than capable of soloing the slain versus Era, going to find himself very close to level 3, and they really lose nothing for that. It's just going to be Handskin not having the greatest time inside the jungle, but now that the Elder Titan is left, things are going to pick up for him. Yeah, Enigma is one of the fastest junglers, mostly because he can instantly kill one creep of the camp, and when you can do that, generally things are going to be pretty good for you, and so far he's been under a little bit of pressure, but I don't think it's going to continue. Era on the top lane is going to take quite a bit of damage. He'll take the stomp as well, but he has a salve and he will be just fine. Uh, those level 2 fire spirits do a hell of a lot of damage, especially if you could land, what, 3 or 4 of them? I don't know the exact numbers on the Phoenix, but uh, it is a lot. It definitely is. It's 30 damage per second for 16 seconds if you connect with all 4 of them, so it is very, very significant. Um, yeah, for now, it's a very passive laning stage as well. The early killing potential on these lanes is fairly limited from either side. Most everybody has an escape. Our Zeke is probably the most likely one to die, but as long as he plays his cards carefully, um, should also be fine. Well, he's looking at 8 Mother, who's actually pretty weak right now as the mid lane Viper, though. This roaming Elder Titan is not something that you could expect to work all the time. Probably will only work because there's Enigma in the game, but uh, because of that fact, our Zeke is actually doing pretty well. He's securing, or he secured a bounty rune for himself, so he made sure that that didn't get into the hands of the Viper. He's messing with the Enigma, and he's actually doing probably the best you could expect from a quote-unquote roaming Elder Titan. Up towards top, though, they're going to put a lot of damage onto Pashu Pashu. That Icarus dive, though, is just such an annoyance to deal with. One magic missile, and it's probably not going to be enough unless you have a lot of burst damage. And right now, the burst damage is lacking. However, our Zeke might be on the receiving end. Magic Missile is now up, but a little bit too late for Seal Kid. Yeah, a very low-level Malpha is not going to really do much to the Elder Titan at all. However, the Phoenix, now that he is so low, he's going to drop a couple of Fire Spirits, but this is about all that he can do. Um... Bashi Bashu is playing things a little bit fast and loose, but it's actually the Viper in mid. Ape Mother caught out by the Astral Spirit. They just need one punch, and can they find it? The Malefus from the Elder, or excuse me, on the Elder Titan might save his life. Now they turn around, getting the first blood themselves as Ape Mother secures that and gets to live. However, with the loser orb, John to that one. No one might be able to secure this kill into Ape Mother. He's not going to kill him with one object attack. The second one will fly and will do him in. However, no one now completely tapped out of mana. Might be in a little bit of trouble. There's a double damage rune on hands. Can both teams going blow for blow? Seal Kid now caught out without any mana. Here's the Spirit coming back through after the Elder Titan died, looking for the stop, it is going to connect and Seal Kid's gone. Well, that was a little bit bold of the Lion side to stick around like that. I mean, once Puck gets the kill on your hero, you're probably going to be a little bit more cautious moving forward, and they probably should have just ran away as fast as they could, but Vegas Squadron came in with enough heroes at the right time. They're going to try to get a return kill onto no one. Poison damage will kill him off. The Pucks also sticking around for too long, as will Seema. He's going to get hit with the Viper Strike, and he's going to be going down. Eight Mother collects a double. And it's actually going to be a buyback from the Puck. He's going to return immediately to this lane and kill off the Viper. So it's a two for one. And also the Phoenix died up towards top. After all is said and done, after five minutes of pretty much nothing, suddenly the score stands four to three. And it is Lions to collect first blood. That first blood, by the way, so freaking close. Like, Elatine stutter stepped his right click that would have killed off the Viper. And that let time for the Enigma to come in. But either way, Lions, I'm pretty sure take a lead no matter how you slice it. 
For sure. Especially since Era is the one to collect up top. Even though he picks up the power treads now, going back into a minus definitely is an option. We're going to have a pause um, for reasons that we have no idea about, but Lions should be happy about um, how all of their lanes are going. Even the Timbersaw, he is currently sitting at level 5, and 5 minutes in for an offlane Timbersaw, even though he is up against a dual lane, is stellar. And he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. With 3 points up in the Timber Chain, once he gets level 6, with any rotation, Stallion or might fall, and if Timbersaw finds the right angle, he could very well solo her, if he has enough mana. And because the Disruptor decided to leave the lane, or was forced to leave the lane, that means Timmersaw is just going to get a little bit of CS as well. And if you give Timmersaw a little bit of CS, suddenly he has Arcane Boots and or a Soul Ring. And then he is, of course, not the happiest hero in the world, but he's perfectly capable of getting some very easy kills. And Stallioner can't really afford to get close to this Timmersaw until the backup arrives. And the backup has arrived. It is perfectly spotted out by Jonas with Van. However, he's slow to react, and he's going to get glimpsed back if he, he doesn't just outright die right now. There's the glimpse after the Timmer chain. He's going to run right into a stomp. And now with the big crit, he's going to be going down. He had an Observe Ward there. Um, maybe just the angle wasn't good. Maybe they just, like, fogged him a little bit, but... I feel like that was slow reaction time from the Timbersaw. Potentially. Up in top, Bashi Bashi also dropping low, but he'll be able to Icarus dive to safety. Now that he has completed Tranquils, he'll be back up at full fairly shortly, but Phoenix does need to be careful. Still, it's Vega striking back. Um, oh, I just timed out of the server. Alright, well, hopefully he'll be able to come back because we have Seal Kid wandering around with a haste rune. As the Venture Spirit, Pashi Bashu at less than half HP, has Tranquils working away, so he will juice up quite a bit. Has an Icarus Dive as well, and VS is actually going the wrong direction, although she will go the right direction. Pashi Bashu is now in a lot of trouble, Missile is going to land, and the Pounce, Pashi Bashu is going to Icarus Dive away. No, he actually returns all the way, full circle. Oh man, like, that's not what you're supposed to do, that's not a good thing. Um, there was actually okay. some discussion in the Summit about Icarus Dive being unresponsive, and maybe that's what it is? I'll track it up to that, because there's really no reason to return to your spirit. I just caught the tail end of that, watching him go around in a circle and dying. That was about all I watched, but uh, my goodness. Pretty unfortunate for Pashi Bashu. Still, he's getting his levels even after dying twice, but definitely needs to be careful. Man, this Phoenix, yeah, just the burst damage. But speaking of burst, down towards bottom, Jonas fan. Hits level 7, and just like that, he finds an angle on the Phantom Assassin. Unleashes Whirling Death, Chakram, and then Timber Chain's over for a kill. Very easily done, and Phantom Assassin, really, even if Disruptor was right next to the Phantom Assassin the entire time, he would not be able to stop the Timbersaw. Unless he was level 6, the Disruptor, he's still only level 4. This Timbersaw is going to be able to pretty much solo kill whoever he gets close to, and that means that the Disruptor has to be extremely close in, the, in that, top, in that uh, bottom lane. Definitely. Timbersaw going to get his level 8. This is an incredibly scary time for Vega. This Timbersaw really doesn't have very many answers on the enemy side. As far as their lockdown, it's mostly limited to the puck. They're going to drop Pashi Bashu low up top yet again as they jaunt to the orb. They stomp up 8 Mother with the Dream Cool. Should be a kill onto the Viper. They bring in the Enigma. However, Black Hole into no one. 8 Mother still surviving. Magic Mist on RZ. Pulled back in Black Hole for a split second, and that's going to be enough. RZ going to be the second kill in mid, and yet again, the Viper's going to make a very, very close shave. I want to believe that 8 Mother is calculating this entire thing. However, Pashi Bashu is going to Icarus Dive all the way around, just looking for that snipe. Will not find anything. Second time, Viper living at double digits of Radiant HP and corrosive skin value, I suppose. Attack. Power Treads, Ring of Quilla, all these small stat items letting him fight like that and actually get away with his life. And he's going to reap some pretty heavy rewards. Now 4-2 on this Viper. And it might not be done, the action, because Jonas and Fan is on the hunt with an Invis Rune. And looky looky, it's going to be a Phantom Assassin. Just has a Quelling Blade, but that's not going to save you here. I'm pretty sure Phantom Assassin is just dead right now. Pure damage from the Whirling Death and Stallioner doesn't even have anything to jump to. In fact, he's getting body blocked. Another Timber Chain forward and Phantom Assassin dead in an instant. There's nothing you could do about that as PA. No, very well played by Jonas and Fan. He kept the Chakra out just enough to where he'd have enough mana for the secondary Timber Chain. So getting the maximum burst... And it works out well for him. Level 8. Timbersaw doesn't really look like an offlaner at this point. He could have very well been lane mid and look exactly the same. Joe the fan is primed to have a really good time this game. He has a thousand gold. I'm assuming he's going to pick up his arcane boots right about now or some sort of mana regeneration item. He might want to just go straight for the... Uh... Okay, well, he had the courier delivered to him. That's just lazy, Timber saw. But either way, he has a lot of extra mana now, and he has enough to kill pretty much anyone. Pashu Bashu up towards oh. the top. Speaking of killing anyone, it's going to get pounced upon. Icarus dive. Don't... Okay, good, good. Don't go all the way full circle, Pashu Bashu. That's not what you want to do. Uh, and he is going to escape, but, man, this Phoenix has got to be so careful. He does have a supernova right now. 
However, I think Lions, just with those two heroes, unless they're hit with the Fire Spirits, are going to be able to cut through that egg really quickly. Yeah, it is a very significant attack speed, so if he can get those Fire Spirits off, uh, maybe there is surviving through the M Supernova, but even so, it's very risky. We do have that Midas on Era after the Power Treads. It's not going to be the fastest Midas you've ever seen, but after getting upgraded boots, it's pretty darn good, and they... <clears throat> are probably going to be able to utilize it very well. As far as Enigma's item build, he's going to have that completed mechanism now. Um, just to be delivered as soon as he wants it. Right, so we got Mech, Hand of Midas, and a Blink Dagger on Puck all being picked up at about the same time. Blink Dagger on Puck is one of the most devastating items. However, Mech on Enigma can turn things around completely, especially when you're talking about Eight Mother, who's already surviving at such low amounts of HP. He's once again going to be jumped. This time, I think he doesn't have much hope to get out of here. Unfortunately for him, there is a random Phantom Assassin here, and the Viper is going to fall. However, it might not be without trade. Jonas the Fan is going to go for Seema, or at least think about it. Glimpse is available, and he's going to glimpse him right back into a Static Storm. Jonas the Fan, though, rather tanky. He's going to get hit with a full-on Supernova Handskin, not going to break that egg. But it doesn't matter, because with the mech, Jonas the Fan is going to get, just get himself away very easily. Pashibashu is now in a little bit of trouble. He's going to Icarus dive forward. Has got to return full circle, but he's going to get swapped back. And looking for an angle is the Timber Saw, but he can't quite find it. Doesn't really matter, because we'll get the kill anyway. Stomp going to land onto two, but it won't be in time to save the Phoenix. And that is going to be that. Phoenix is going to be going down after failing his ultimate mid lane. Tower was brought down so I suppose the trade isn't too terrible for Vegas Squadron but overall I think Lions should be okay with how that went. Definitely. I mean there's really not anything super bad. Puck's gonna jaunt to his orb and now no one is in a whole lot of trouble. Doesn't have a phase shift. He will use that but now no one's completely dead. Not much that he can actually do here. Silences up 8 mother and stopped the last poison attack but still was able to right click him down. Wait so he just randomly threw an orb and then jaunted to it mm -hmm. right in front of the Viper? Yeah it, it was like he threw the orb here and then Viper was here, huh. so I, I don't know. Well, top lane, Ira is going to hit with a stomp. He will get into the Shadow Dance, and with that regen and the pounce, he will get away. Glimpse available for Sima, but no angle for Vision. So Slark is going to take the tower down and will be safe in doing so. That's the second time Vega have now pretty much committed suicide with their hero abilities. I In 12 minutes, that's like a lot more than you usually see. Maybe, maybe you see one accidental suicide, but... Not two, that's just so many layers of messed up. But Jonas the Fan, oh man, he has a haste and Stallioner is going to have some help this time with no one. However, Jonas the Fan's going to break the coil. He still has that haste and a lot of armor and regen. He's going to get himself out of there, but no one coming in big. In the meantime, they're going to set up towards the mid lane. Seal Kid, 8 Mother, going to hit with a little bit of that fire. No one doesn't have a coil anymore. Seal Kid will turn around for a missile, but it won't be enough to stop his death. As Seal Kid is going to be going down, the initiation range of Vega is actually pretty darn high with the Icarus Dive and the Blink Dagger on the puck, and, well, clearly the puck Blink Dagger is being a lot more influential than the Enigma's mech. Definitely. They haven't been able to push any towers down with it, and for now, Enigma's sitting on a robe of the Magi. It kind of feels like it's just going to be power treads for him, um, but either way, we have apparently lag. Um, but yeah, about this time with the maxed out Eidolons, it would be nice to see the um, Enigma put some pressure onto these towers, but he's just been passively farming, and he's farming very well. Currently the third highest CS in the game, and doing well in the net worth department, just not utilizing it very well. And that's just the fault of the Enigma. He gets his gold up really quickly, but unless you're actually spending it and actively using it, then a mech, well, a five minute mech is amazing, a 30 minute mech is kind of bad, so... Uh, you really have to get value out of the items while you still can. That being said, it's very hard to go for any sort of unit-based pushing against what Vega have. They'll just throw a couple of fire spirits, they'll send the astral sp the, uh, spirit into there, and the orb, everything the puck has, will clear out those Eidolons pretty quickly. So I suppose this is just the best way for Lions to approach this game. Get Enigma farm when he can, and get Ira farm when he can as well. And Ira's farming pretty darn well. It's not many, there are not many heroes on the top lane, for Vega. Whenever someone does come up there, they're forced out pretty quickly. Yeah. Even though Phantom Assassin has died twice and hasn't gone for the Midas, however, she's able to keep up this farm because she's gotten some really important kills. Um, so it's still looking okay for Vega, but they do need to tighten up the screws. There have been a couple of questionable plays, in particular like that Phoenix Dive, the puck um, getting a little too aggressive on the Viper, but it kind of feels like they have the tools that will allow them to go aggressive now, whereas Lions, they kind of need to wait until they have like a blink on the Slark um, or a completed item on the Timber. Even though he has a lot of levels, right now the Static Storm and Glimpse is going to be really annoying for Jonas Sunfan. We saw how fast he was dropping when he was caught in the enemy jungle. Of course, he was able to escape because of a haste rune, but 
if he didn't have that, for sure he would have gone down. Of course, he wouldn't have been there if he didn't have a haste rune, so there is that to consider. But Timmersaw able to put out a lot of damage, but for sure it's going to be the static storm and the glimpse that's going to be the bane of his existence. And if he does go down, I'm pretty sure the Disruptor is definitely going to hand, have a hand in it. Yeah, there's really not anything else that they could use. Maybe um, without the Disruptor, no one can lock him down fast enough, especially with the maxed out waning rift and if he has Dream Quill available. But uh, still, Timbersaw is probably going to be fine in less Disruptors there. But um, Sima is probably going to have a good time. Up towards top, they've brought all three of their cores and looking for this kill onto Ira, and they might be able to find it. Right now, he's chilling over inside the woods. They have the Icarus dive as well as the blink on the puck. If Ira shows his face to this lane, he's in a whole heap of trouble. Although it's going to be Hanskin to wander forward first. He has 8 Mother right behind him. He also has the Venge right behind him. Black Hole, probably not going to hesitate to use that one at all. But Icarus Dive, Pashibashi is going to jump right into Seal Kid, who's actually going to get crit down in a hurry. That's going to be one for one immediately. Ira going to get right on top of Seaman's there. We'll get Glimpse back, and he will try to pack it out. But that won't happen. Hanskin in the meantime, catching no one with the Black Hole. Jonas Pan's going to come in, whirling some death. And that's going to be two for one up on top. Black Hole used just for the puck. Very much so worth it. That's going to give Ira enough cash for his Blink Dagger. And unfortunately for Lions, there's no tower to take up here. But they still take a two for one, only giving away their support. And they kill off the puck, who's pretty much the most problematic hero from Vega right now. Yeah, good wraparound and good read coming out from Lions, securing them that engagement. Um, they're not going to be able to take a tower after the fact, but it's still really good for them. We still have yet to see Pashi Bashu really accomplish anything um, on these Phoenix, except for dying a handful of times. He's been involved in two kills, but just not been very useful. The Fire Spirits are really nice if you can keep them on the Slark. He's doing a decent amount of damage, but there's no way. He has no backup close. Elder Titan's the closest hero, and even then, he'll just pounce up to the high ground and be fine. Yeah, Era is not going to die to a Phoenix anytime soon, and I guess... He also has some answers to the Fire Spirits. One of the few heroes that does, he'll just be able to pack it out. So, uh, Ira is going to pretty much be able to force out whoever is in the top lane by himself at this point. He's going to jump on Pachi Bashi, drop him down dangerously low. He has no Icarus dive. He has a Supernova. Ira is actually going to peel away and let him go. But in the meantime, we have a fight over towards mid where Eight Mother is taking quite a bit of damage. Spirit once again going to be thrown. Hansky with the mech is going to keep him alive as the Seal Kid swapped himself back in. Glimpse back into Eight Mother, but Jonas Fan is going to make short work of the Elder Titan before the Viper can go down. Now they're going to go for no one. Stuck in a corner. Lands a nice coil, but you need a much better coil than that or a better skill than that if you're going to survive. In the meantime, Slark assassinates the Phantom Assassin off to the side. Eight Mother once again cutting it close, but will live. Pashi Bashu will get out of that situation versus Slark with 45 HP. But still, Lions take a 4 for nil. 8 Mother getting healed up once again by Handskin coming in at just the nick of time. And Jonas Fan collecting big as well. This is getting pretty bad for Vega. They uh, just didn't quite have enough in that area. Jonas Fan's damage is just way too freaking high right now. It really is. Without the Static Storm, keeping the Timber Saw in place is really difficult. And after getting so many levels, this Timber is incredibly scary. Jonas Fan is going to have a really, really fast Bloodstone. Um, picking up the double damage rune to fill up his bottle and to give him a little bit of regen. Now they go into the Roshan pit. It's not the easiest of Roshans, but with the Wave of Terror as well as the Eidolons to help bring it down, they should be able to take it. Although, with the Astral Spirit flying through, Vega can contest the Icarus dive over. Phoenix going to drop into the Supernova. However, it might catch Hanskin. The Static Storm onto two, dropping Seal Kid low. The crit onto the Enigma. It's going to be the end of his life. The Supernova doesn't stun anything, but Lions are forced out of the pit. Now, unfortunately, Vega have a really slow Roshan as well. They're going to try to go for this. However, it's not impossible to see Lions try to contest. We have a buyback from the Vengeful Spirit. She's not going to get any items anytime soon, but do they really need it? Wave forward to get some vision. Now RZ going to get engaged upon by 8 Mother. He's going to take a face full of Puck combo, as well as a whole bunch of Fire Spirits. Needs the mech up about right now. 8 Mother's dropping way too low. Is going to get swapped out, but it's too late because of a dagger crit. Ira's going to try to take out the rest of Roshan, but it's going to be so close. Stallion is going to not get there in time. And Ira, he might be going down right now, but he already grabbed the Aegis. No one's going to try to pick off Ira in the meantime with the coil, but Ira's still surviving. Don't snap that coil, Ira, unless he snaps the coil. That's fine, too. Jones fan out of mana is going to try to chase down this Phoenix. Has another Timber Chain and the Pounds that will lead to the Phoenix's death. Now they're looking towards the high ground where Sima and Arzik still here, but really there's not much mana left on the Lion's side, although Slark does have that Aegis respawn because of that he's at full. And he's going to get Glimpse back for right now. No one's still in a little bit of trouble, however. He's going to be able to orb away, and looks like Ira can't find anyone else. After all is said and done, it cost them a buyback on the Ventral Spirit. It wasn't the cleanest fight for Lions, but they do end up walking away with the Roshan, the Aegis, and all the experience and gold, everything like that. So, overall, pretty even? Yeah, it, it definitely feels very even. The Bloodstone on the Timbersaw is now completed, and Lions 
they get quite a lot of gold under his slark because of it. Now an ultimate orb on top to blink as well as the hand of Midas. Things are looking up for them, even though I think that fight was about as good as Vega could have hoped for. If they got the Roshan, maybe it tips it in their favor. Handskin down the bottom, destroying the trees. That TP's not going to be cancelled by our Zeke, and now he's completely screwed. Um, not exactly sure what the thought process there was. No one stuck in the sidelines. They are going to drop a stag storm. Has caught out Handskin. He's able to walk casually out of it. However, now with the waning rift silence, they go into stall the Aener. Handskin dropping low. Down here, not going to be able to finish him off before the black hole comes out. And now Phantom Assassin's going to fall at the three for nail. And now looking for more. Pop jaunting to his orb. Should be able to get out of here alive. However, the timber chain, Chakram Slow, is going to be applied to no one. And Jones Sun Fan wants blood, and he might be able to get it. There's going to be a secondary blink, and Timberslaw is going to be forced to pull back. Tier 1 tower down bottom has already fallen, and Lions take a really good fight. Jonathan Fan is a maniac, guys. He just did so much work in that fight. Of course, the Enigma. His mech is... It has not having, like, the same oomph effect of the Puck Blink Dagger. It's not as flashy, but... Man, is it saving some lives. He already saved the Viper's life a couple of times, like two or three at this point. He saved his own life there. The turnaround black hole at the last possible second to keep himself alive and also get that kill. All the while, Jonas Advantage is just doing damage in all the right places. He picked up his Bloodstone. Now he's all the way up to 11 charges in a hurry. Like, he pretty much just picked up a Bloodstone. And 20-minute Bloodstone is pretty good, but with 11 charges, that's even better. Jonas Advan is going to hunt forward for Pashibashu. Probably not going to find him, but... Man, Lions take a fantastic fight, even after being caught behind a tier 1 tower, I suppose. That fight could have been a lot better if our Zeke wasn't the first one to teleport into that. That kind of screwed them over from the beginning, but man, that fight was really well played by Lions. It definitely was. There just wasn't a place where Vega could actually find a foothold in that engagement. We're getting very close to like a 21 minute, 22 minute Scotty on era. If they take another fight, it could be even faster. Um, but already has the two ultimate orbs up. Everybody on the side of Lions is incredibly scary when it comes to net worth. Ventral Spirit is lagging behind, bottom net worth in the entire game. But then again, Sail Kids Avenge. As long as you're there for the swap, the wave of terror, you've pretty much done your job. I'm not sure how the net worth chart works, but I want to say if you buy back, that like subtracts your net worth. And Venge was the only one to buy back, or the puck bought back once. But that might be a thing? I have no idea, but... Yeah. Well, net worth, it just sums up the items that you have and your bank gold, so... Yeah, so yes. I guess if you just lose gold from buying back, it does decrease. Either way, Seal Kid doesn't need net worth, right? He has level yeah. 1 swap, he has max out Wave of Terror. Although it would be nice to have a Ventral Spirit with a 4 Staff, Blink Dagger, everything else. It's fine, because Era is getting a lot, 8 Mother is starting to bulk up as well, and Jonas of Fan is, well, being Timbersaw, so... It's okay if Venge is lagging behind. It definitely is. For Vega, what do they need to actually fight into the enemy team? Phantom Assassin, she'd like more damage, but without a BKB, is she going to be able to survive? And even with the Black King bar, will she live? I'm not sure. There just doesn't seem to be an item that's immediately going to get Vega back into this game. They need a whole slew of items on a lot of heroes. The heroes that have to do the most work in order for them to come back into this game. Elder Titan has to stay alive and Disruptor has to get his skills off. They're going to catch Jonas Fan. They have a glimpse. Jonas Fan, though he may be very tanky, he has to go for a suicide right about now. Commit Sudoku. No, too late. He gets, I believe, Crit Dagger and he's going to go down. Pashibashi, though, going to be jumped by Hanskin or is it the other way around? Now Hanskin caught with the coil. Supernova as well. You can't really escape that. The sun is going to explode all over Hanskin. Uh, yeah, right on the edge, actually. Hanskin now gonna get swapped out by the Vengeful Spirit, but an Icarus dive forward. Hanskin should die, and he will. Seema's gonna lay a zoning uh, ultimate down, but here comes Jonas Fan back from the dead. Very short respawn timer there. He's gonna whirl right through a whole bunch of them. Gets glimpsed back before the Timber Chain can actually connect, but another magic missile, and Jonas Fan unfortunately misses that Timber Chain, so he can't immediately kill off Seema, but I'm pretty sure Seema is screwed anyway because Jonas Fan has so much mobility. That's Jonas Fan collecting a double right back up to 10 bloods to charge. Now here comes Ira. Was not in this fight at all. It's gonna give Jonas Fan a triple and Puck, well he's on the bottom lane, counter pushing that one out, but they sniped Timbersaw to begin that fight with 11 Bloodstone charges, I think at that point, he was up so very quickly. Yeah, just mere seconds, so Jonathan Fan was able to join the engagement again with Boots of Travel as well. Jonathan Fan is still a force to be reckoned with. As a Timbersaw, this is pretty much your peak. Getting an Aghanim Scepter does extend your effectiveness in the game, or other big items like a Scythe, but um, still Jonathan Fan is running the show. Vega. They need to focus him down inside the duration of the Static Storm, but that's just so difficult for them to do unless they get some really lucky crits. They're able to do it once, but twice is too tall an order. I mean, they don't really have any answers to Timbersaw twice. It's pretty much he's working with an Aegis at all times, assuming he collects this many kills after uh, after dying, so 
Jonas Fan's respawn timer is going to be really problematic for Vega. They don't have any consistent low cooldown disables for Timmersaw. Like, they don't have a magic missile or any skill that's comparable to that. So, Timmersaw, he may die once. And that's, I think, okay with Lions if they could actually reinforce there in time. And they don't take the cleanest fight after the Timmersaw went down, but that's because Eero was very far away. If he was there, then things could have been so much different for the lion side. Like, it would have been nice and clean. Maybe the Supernova one team even gone off, but... Who knows? Ira is still farming away. Has the Eye of Scotty. Uh, picked it up, I, I want to say, just 22 minutes, something like that. But he also has 1,600 gold in the bank. So this Slark is loaded, and he's going to run into Pashi Bashu. Of course, Pashi is going to know about this, and the smoke will be revealed. However, it's not going to be notified. Eight Mother apparently missed the memo. He's going to get jumped on by the PA. Gets crit down pretty darn low. Now the Sleep Power Seal Kid's going to swap him out. This probably is going to be the death of the Ventral Spirit. Gets mecked up a little bit, and now Stallion is going to get stunned up. But it's not in time to save the bench. It will be in time for a black hole in style on that will be a two for one. Phoenix is gonna once again die for, but Ira's right on top of our Zeke in the meantime. I've Scott, you can't run from that. Now Ira's gonna get coiled, but he doesn't really give a damn about the coil. He's gonna instantly snap it and then buff out the stun. The Viper's still very weak, but he's more than safe right now. Puck is gonna throw himself into the air. He's going to jaunt to an orb to the high ground. Just gonna lay a chakram right on top, but for some reason the chakram doesn't do damage in time. And you could blink straight on out of that, and no one still being chased down. As mobile as the puck is, I don't really think he has anywhere to go from here because Jonas Fan has more than enough mana. Here comes Ira as well. No one's wasting a lot of time, I suppose that's nice, but there's no way to get out of that. Once again, Lions take a fantastic fight. For sure. Jonas and Fan really can't be stopped, and he now has that Blink Dagger incredibly mobile on this Timber Sun. I really like the Blink Dagger choice in mid. Looking for a pounce on the Pesci Bashu. They won't be able to connect. Seam and Slayer going to glimpse back the Timber Sun, so going to waste it, but not before he dies. Ira picks up the kill. Here, it's like, thanks for the back out, I guess. He probably would have wanted to stick around just because Pashi Bashu is looking really tasty right now, but it's not too late to just walk back into the fight. Pashi Bashu does not know where the Timbersaw got glimpsed back to, so Jonas Fan has an opportunity to pretty much insta give the Phoenix right now, and our Zeke is also in a lot of trouble. Ears right on top of him, and they both die at the exact same time. These assassins from Lions are just going nuts all over Vega. Jonas and Fan getting in there at the right time. Ira is very easily able to kill off the Elder Titan pretty much every single time. Now doubling up Vega's kill score. Lions are going to start taking this tier 2 tower. Puck is going to blink in. Has to watch out because, you know, at a certain point, Lions are going to have a surprise hex or something like that. It's not there yet, but, uh, man, the Puck has got to be playing this very carefully right now. Yeah, definitely. Right now, BKB picked up by Slark. It feels like Lions want to and can end this game now. They also have a BKB on their Enigma. Is there anything that Vega can actually do to stop this? PA is forced to go for match community of her own, um, but Stalliander just doesn't do the damage, even when um, the pa Phantom Assassin crits. It just doesn't feel like it's enough to kill off these heroes for Lions. And that's because of just the vast amount of survivability that they have, with the stats from Muscati, as well as reactive armor on the Timber side. Now, a very soon to be finished Shiva's. And also, Seal Kid being Vengeful Spirit is also very nice. Having that now level 2 swap out, and Phantom Assassin would ideally like to get on top of Handskin and try to bring the Enigma down in a hurry, but with the swap, that's just not going to happen. Unless you're going for Seal Kid, you're probably not going to get that kill. And now, Eight Mother is going to pack a double life, has Aghanim Scepter completed, has been pretty much the hero to take most of the fire, the Viper, but uh, now he's going to be more than happy to do so. And in general, you're happy to do that for the team. If you're taking the heat, that means the Timbersaw isn't, that means the Slark isn't, that means you're probably going to win the team fight. Yeah, definitely, and even if the Venge does die, does have that maxed out aura, and if that's applied to the Phantom Assassin, her damage is going to be incredibly limited. Her actual plus damage is very low, and that could be significant inside the fights. Um, honestly, Venge, if she dies, um, yeah, it doesn't matter as long as the defensive swaps on point. For the entire game, Seal Kid's been playing pretty well, even though he has been the one to die on his team. That's kind of his job, right? Um, Ven or, um, yeah. For now, it's just going to be Lions to push up top. They have all of their cooldowns ready. They have the Ages on the Viper, and they're primed for pretty much a death ball push. Vega are going to be hard pressed to stop this. Well, Jonas Fan is going to maybe get picked off to start things off. The mech is going to be here in time, plus the swap will be as well. Stallioner is going to bypass the black hole entirely just in time. 
and Phoenix is going to lay some fire onto Seal Kit and Handskin. BKB Black Hole has already been used. Where are the rest of Lion's Heroes? Timbersaw is going to respawn immediately, teleport right back into this, but he's going to teleport into a supernova. He will annihilate the puck to start things off. Now in style he goes, he will get glimpsed all the way back, which will help him dodge that supernova. Sima is also going to try to TP out, but Eight Mothers around in the middle of things. Stallion is going to try to blink towards Eight Mother just to get away from Ira. He will get that happen, and Phoenix can also TP while using that Sunray movement thing. <laughs> That's something that I did not know about, but sure, either way, it's still Lions to take a two for two trade, but man, Timbersaw coming back, getting a couple of kills, still up at 12 Bloodstone charges. And I'm pretty sure he will always, or I guess maybe not, but he will also have buyback if he really needs to. Uh, Vega, they're forced to buy back with the puck. I don't think this puck is going to get any buyback value. It really doesn't feel like that. That probably went the best possible for Vega. Era going ham on the sidelines. Going to get comes back, but not before he kills our Zeke. More or less just going to thank the Disruptor. They go up to the high ground. Yule Scepter onto the Slark. Can they actually kill him? Loser Orb comes through him. He's going to jaunt to that orb, but Era, I don't think he really cares much. He doesn't have a lot of backup, but it is coming shortly. And the Viper and the Timbersaw in the back lines, they're going to throw a Sunray through, but Era's just going to turn on the puck. Sunray does a decent chunk of damage, and Era needs to be careful. He doesn't have the Aegis. He's going to drop the ultimate. The extra regen's going to be nice. Pops his BKB and just runs casually out of there. A mother here, they can't fight now. I'm pretty sure there was actually no way that Vega could have killed the Slark there with the BKB and the Shadow Dance. Like, of course, you don't really want to use those skills if you don't have to, but. He was used, forced to use both, but it's going to be Pashu Bashu to jump, uh, or to get jumped on. Jonas Fan's going to lay a lot of damage to the Phoenix. Stallion is going to get the BKB off before the Timber Chain can go through, but it's actually going to be the Puck, who is apparently caught out, and sitting in the chalk room is going to jump out of the phase right into that. However, Ira is now stuck in a corner. is going to get with Static Storm. This time doesn't have a BKB, and Stallion and Phoenix going to make short work of him, but here comes Jonas Fan. Our Zeke is already down. Glimpse back onto the Timber Saw as Icarus Dive is going to try to keep the Phoenix alive. Seaman Slayer is going to get chased down, though. The egg might explode. Load, it will not do it. And that's too many heroes dead. They kill off Era, but it's at a steep cost. They call GG, and we're moving to a game number two. Lions with a very convincing victory. It really was. That Phoenix just didn't do very much for them, and the lanes all went pretty well for Lions. There really wasn't a spot where you could say they were doing anything less than trading even, and all of the trades that they did have were in their favor. In the end, Jonas and Fenn completely had a field day this game. Era was left pretty alone. Eight Mother had a couple of deaths in mid, but some really crazy turnarounds as well. I'm not sure you can say very much else. Lions played really well, and Vega, they need to tighten up the screws, do something different in the draft, or just look for a different approach come game two if they want to stay in the tournament. All right, guys, that's going to mean that Lions are now 1-0 up, and, well, Vega, they have one chance to stay in this tournament. Otherwise, they're just out. We're going to be right back for game number two in this best of three in just a little bit.